Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome back to our uh, LLF uh, Let's Learn Futures webinar series. So today, uh, our topic would be the automation of FCPO and FKLI trading using AI. So AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. So this LLF webinar series is brought to you by Brusa Malaysia and in collaboration with our company, Excellent. This webinar will be starting from 8.30 to 10 p.m. So my name is C.Y. Son. I will be the moderator today. And today we will be having Alex Seal and he will be sharing you with this uh, informative topic. Now, before we begin, if you can hear me, uh, type in OK or Yes in the chat box or uh, give me a thumbs up so that I know that uh, uh, my voice reached you. And also, you can adjust your volume so that it is audible and you can listen to uh, my voice and the speaker's voice clearly. So, are you ready and good to go? Great. Now, as you know that uh, we are currently in the MCO period, so uh, most people will be uh, staying at home uh, surfing the internet. So, the internet connection, the traffic might be uh, congested and not stable. So, to ensure that you can enjoy the smoothest and highest quality uh, video possible, uh, please turn off your video so you can enjoy a smooth video running as well as uh, having a good learning experience. Our session today will be divided into two sessions. So the first 60 minutes will be presented by Alex and the following 30 minutes uh, we will be opening up for Q&A session. So if you have any questions along the way, you can type in your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer your questions later during the Q&A session. So I repeat again, if along the way, if you have any questions, you can type in, in the Q&A box and make sure that it is actually sent to all co-hosts. And please only type in your question in the Q&A box. And uh, later on, uh, we will only be uh, grabbing your question in the Q&A box because uh, there may be a lot of uh, conversations in the chat box and I may not see your questions. So to ensure that your questions are able to reach me, all you need to do is actually follow these two simple steps so that I can receive your question and your questions will be answered. Now, as you know that this uh, LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series is brought to you by Malaysia, Busa Malaysia. Uh, we have several upcoming topics that will be presented to you as well. And this LLF webinar series is of course related to Malaysia futures trading in uh, FKLI, FCPO and other derivative products that is uh, provided by uh, Busa Malaysia. So, each and every Tuesday, we will having, be having this LLF webinar and uh, this LLF series uh, will be conducted in uh, three languages, English, Malay, as well as in Mandarin. So if you are currently trading FCPO or FKLI, or even if uh, you are interested in trading uh, FKLI and FCPO futures someday, then uh, this LLF webinar is right for you, where our experienced speakers will be sharing you insightful uh, knowledge and practical uh, strategies on futures trading. So if you're interested in any topic and want to improve your knowledge and skills on futures trading, you can scan on the QR code below and register yourself and make sure you add it into your calendar so you don't miss any of the sessions. Now, Besides the LLF uh, webinar series, uh, we also have the LLF online workshop. And this LLF online workshop uh, is actually not suitable for everyone. And this is only for those uh, of you who are serious in getting started in futures trading. And in this workshop, we will be covering a full set of uh, beginner knowledge in uh, futures trading that are important and essential for you. And it is a step-by-step -step guide to enable you to kickstart your first futures contract. So each session is around three hours. And for those of you who are really, really serious in kickstart your futures trading, then uh, this workshop is definitely right for you. There is uh, two uh, workshops in uh, two languages. So 
because each workshop is only limited to the first 50 online attendees. So listen carefully, it's only limited to 50 online attendees. So make sure uh, you really have the intention to kickstart your futures trading, then only you register for it, all right? Now, uh, before we begin, uh, let me introduce our speaker for today. His name is Alex Seal. So Alex uh, was the first chairman of a Malaysia chapter of a CMT Association. He has extensive experience in the fund management. So formerly, he served as a fund manager in a VCB Capital, a boutique asset management company for more than five years. And currently, Alex is the fund director of a SC licensed robo uh, advisory firm, which is the BH a Global Fintech Solutions Sajiran Bahad. Alex is specializing in uh, trading system and strategies, value investing, trading psychology, as well as uh, designing, developing, and uh, programming of a uh, machine learning algorithm for a uh, robo advisory. So that uh, would be the main topic that uh, you will be exposing as well as learning today. So without further ado, let me uh, pass this to Alex and uh, let's get started. Hi, thank you so. Hi, everyone. Hello, good evening. Uh, let me just pass the mic to myself. Okay. Okay, right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah, my name is Alex. Uh, uh, let me just have some interaction. Uh, how many of you have never seen me before? At the chat box there, just put a one. Those of you who have seen me before, put a two. Or oh, some people say can't hear. Is it? Is it? You are able to hear, right? Uh, yes, we are able to hear. Okay, okay, okay. Can't hear anything. Some people say can't hear anything. All right. Yes, hear well. Okay. Well, okay. A lot of people didn't know me. Okay. Uh, two hundred and fifty over participants, but I do know some of you. <laughs> a lot of experts here. A lot of uh specialists here in FCP or FKLI. So I already uh, asked some of my friends who are, I know they are attending, uh, please don't bombard me with very, very difficult questions. There are a lot of people here, they are more skillful than me. So uh, what the intention of uh, what I'm doing tonight, okay, is to, in this time of pandemic, I would like to encourage everyone, okay, uh, stay uh, focused, stay motivated. I know a lot of uh, people are very demotivated or bored. So stay interesting, you know. Like uh, FCPO and FKLI are two products that can be very interesting and can be very, very, very innovative if you look at it from different perspective. So the purpose of why I'm sharing tonight is to encourage everyone is to relook at our Malaysian Busa futures in a more a very interesting way and in a different angle so that you all will enjoy okay, uh, trading these products. Okay, right. That's the purpose of, of course, I, I will not be talking too much into strategy. Rather, I'll talk more of my own experience, okay, in uh, uh, the technology that I and my, my colleagues develop, okay, on this type of products. And also, uh, I will not be selling anything. I will not be uh, so, uh, talking about selling you any software. Any software that I mentioned is all for my own experience and also for education and uh, knowledge per person. Yeah, okay, so I'll just do my disclaimer here. So without further ado, let me just share my slides. Okay. Okay. Right. I hope all of you can see my slide. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, okay. Uh, tonight's topic, well, it's a very big topic. It's a, it's a stressful topic. Automation of uh, futures product using AI. Okay. AI is a very big word. Okay. Let me just uh, break it down to a smaller component of it. Right, so there's some uh, disclaimer here, right? Uh, all these things are for education purpose only. I will not be selling you anything, okay? Right, it's a disclaimer. Uh, you have already introduced about me. Okay, uh, first thing, uh, there are a few parts, okay, of my sharing, okay? The first part is the infrastructure, okay? Like, uh, what are the current platforms? Uh, how, how interesting can we adjust it a bit? Okay, to make things a little bit more interesting. And then I'll be talking a bit about uh, the strategy part. Okay, and uh, later on, on the machine learning and AI component. Okay, right. So let me just start with uh, part one. Okay, automation for uh, local BUSA directives. Okay, so this is not AI. This is how to automate. Okay, 
Uh, there are so much, so little information out there, I must say, when I first embarked onto this journey of wanting to automate uh, FCPO and FKLI. Of course, uh, I'm not pro I will not be promoting any broker. I'm not broker specific. I'm not company specific. So for example, some of the information could be old information, okay, because, but, but they used to be the way it works that time, okay. Like for example, uh, a few years ago, yeah, when I want to automate, uh, there has to, I have to go through certain uh, API vendors, okay, if I want to automate in a certain broker, okay, right. I'll try my best not to mention broker's name, just to be partial, all right, all right, just stay impartial, right. And then uh, I also have to go through certain uh, IT providers, but things have changed. Now we can become, have more and more choices, okay, more and more choices. All right. So for example, uh, this is just an example. Okay. It doesn't have to be the only way. And when I mention certain API vendor, they are not the only vendor and it, there can be other alternatives as well. Okay. Like for example, many years ago, okay. When I want to automate, let's say FCPO trading, okay. In a certain bro uh, broker, I have to go through their API vendor. So last time one API vendor was called Pet System. Okay. So I have to go through, I have to connect my, my algorithm to their through their system so that they can help me to connect to the broker so that i can automate my fcpo trading okay right and then if i do not know how to do it myself if i don't have the algorithm there are certain it providers who can help me to code my strategy into an algorithm one of those company last time uh, is called algomac yeah one of the uh, company that i used to uh, ask some help from okay so that was the the, the previous structure Okay, and of course, I will also need to ask for data from the broker before my algorithm can make some prediction, right? So this data has to go through the API vendor as well. Okay, so this structure used to be the way things works, okay? And uh, now, of course, there are some improvements to it. Yeah, okay, right. So I would just want to go through very briefly what actually the limitations of the local platform Okay, this is non broker specific. I think most of the brokers platform are in this way. Okay, and my main emphasis is that the brokers platform, I mean, most of the brokers that we know, the local brokers is limited to uh, a fixed set of technical indicators. I say, okay, as you can see here. All right, all these indicators are very, very familiar to everyone, right? Like um, moving average, Bollinger Bands, yeah. Uh, MACD, stochastics, all these things, right? So I actually, as a person who is very curious about technical tools, yeah, since uh, 2000, year 2000 until now, I have always been asking myself, like, uh, why is, like, Anger Bollinger, uh, 1970, uh, stochastics, 1960-something, and, uh, you know, Gerard Apple, uh, MACD, 1965, and Moving Average, 1950, and why are all these indicators at the every broker's platform? And it's not just Malaysian brokers. It's also US brokers and Singapore brokers. And why, why are all these indicators like, like before 1990s? So what happened to 1990 to now? Are there no one that invented any indicators at all? So we will always have to use these old indicators forever. Like if I want to trade FCPO or FKI, must I be using Bollinger Band forever? I don't have any other choices. So even though I can make money, I might feel a little bit bored by using all these old indicators and there's no innovation. So um, local platforms do not allow for programming of new indicators, okay? I think that is the fact. And if you want to, let's say, oh, I have an idea, I want to program into, let's say, a certain broker, okay? Like for example, a Rakuten or I don't know, uh, MBank or Maybank or, or Affin, I think there's a limitation to how much I can program a customized indicator into a local platform. I think that's the key point. So uh, even the youngsters, okay, I used to lecture part-time, yeah, in universities and colleges. I can see youngsters, they are limited to all sets of tools. So I was thinking, is there any way that other than Bollinger Band, okay, can I actually invent you know, something new, something interesting. So it's not just for the profit, but can we make trading more interesting? That was the quest uh, I had since 2000 plus, and then it became the quest of my life. Like my whole life has always just been 
inventing and creating new indicators. I think that is what makes trading fun is that we become innovative, we think innovatively, and we just want to enjoy the process. It's not just making the money, but also creating the tools that can make trading really, really fun. Okay, so I want to talk about uh, Bootstrap Station as a source of reliable data that where, where we can extract data from. Okay, these are paid uh, sources. Okay, there are also free sources, of course, like Yahoo Finance or Google Finance. So the data is important. Okay, it's important. And why do we need to extract data from Bootstrap Station and put it into Excel? And why do we need to do that? Can't we just trade directly from the local broker platform. The reason why I want to do that is because uh, during the, um, let's say mid 2000, let's say 2005, 2006, I realized that uh, we can actually create our own indicators uh, in free. We don't really have to pay for the platform to create indicators, okay? So one of the platform that I want to introduce to everyone, okay, is this platform called um, MetaTrader. Okay, MetaTrader. A lot of people associate MetaTrader with uh, Forex and scam, but that's not what MetaTrader is. It's just that those Forex brokers, they use MetaTrader as well to serve their customers. Okay, but MetaTrader is just a platform that end user can use for free to develop new indicators in. Okay, and we can even put our FCPO price or FKLI price into MetaTrader so that we can develop indicators in it, okay? So I'm just, I'm not going to show you step by step, but rather today is just concepts and ideas for you, okay? So if you don't get the steps uh, very clear, don't worry, okay? I'm sure I think Abusa will have certain, uh, certain other classes where they will have to be more technical, but today I try not to be too technical, okay? I try not to be too technical because not all of you are from technical background, but rather give you interesting ideas, all right? So as you can see that, uh, after just a few steps extracting from Busa Station, I can actually put FCPO data into MetaTrader, okay? And then you can see that once you put uh, FKLI or FCPO data into MetaTrader, then you can actually analyze FCPO and FKLI inside MT4 or MT5, okay? You can do that, right? And then you can actually develop indicators in it. That is actually one way is the uh, cost-effective way of developing uh, interesting indicators uh, for retail users because I understand retail traders don't have much budget, unlike hedge funds, they have a big R&D budget, okay? So MT4 is a platform that can support development of indicators as well as development of technical systems, okay? You can see I'm very specific here. I didn't say AI system, I said technical systems to automate Busa Futures trading, okay? FKLI, FCPO, you can actually uh, automate it in uh, through MT4 and MT5 platform, okay? Provided that you can get the data from somewhere. Let's say you buy the data from Busa, load it into MT4 or MT5, and then you use your own indicators to create signals. And then from there, send the signal back to uh, through your broker to execute your trades, okay? Uh, through your brokers, okay? That is possible actually. So MT4 and MT5, is actually could be a place where you develop your interesting indicators. Okay, so that's the what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, and how do you do that? How do you do that? Because you can see that in MT4, okay, this MT4, yeah, is the same as MT5. You just have to click Meta Editor and it will just open up. Okay, this is in C++, okay, C++. So you can develop your own customized indicators here. So AI is also just mas machine learning language, okay, machine learning algorithm. Okay, it could be unsupervised or supervised, uh, which can be linked to here. But let's start with, before AI, let's start with interesting new technical system first. And all then, all of this can be developed in a very cost-effective way for end users, for retail traders who are trading FKI and FCPO in MetaTrader. Okay, you can just download it for free from online, and then you can just uh, try it out, Meta Editor. Okay, then the next question you're going to ask me, of course, is, um, uh, this is C++, I don't understand programming. Uh, how do I go about doing that, okay? So let me share with you, okay? There are a lot, a lot of programmers in the market and you can get their service for a relatively cheap fee. So most important, what is valuable is your original idea, okay? It's not really the programming part. There are other people who can help you to program, there are companies out there. So don't worry about the programming part, but rather 
the original idea of the strategy is really the most valuable. So if you have an interesting idea and you want to test it out, there are always people out there that you can engage to code it into MetaTrader for you and then try out for you whether your system works or not, okay, whether your idea works or not, okay? It's actually possible. It's actually possible, all right? And you can see indicators like uh, in MetaTrader can be customized, okay? And then you can backtest it, uh, whether your system is going to work or not, okay? And then it's going to show you the result of the backtesting. And backtesting is not the last step. Backtesting is the first step, okay? So if you have an idea and from idea, you engage a programmer, program it for you, and then after that, you try it out in MT4 and see whether with, uh, with some backtesting data and backtest and see, well, well, your strategy seems to work without any curve fitting. Yeah, you don't curve fit it. It seems to work in the past. And then you say, well, maybe it works in the future. Then you, you forward test it. So backtesting is the first step. Forward testing is the second step. Then you really test it out in live trading, okay? With either demo account or a very small amount of money, real money, okay? Right. And then your strategy report can be ex exported if you need to analyze it, okay? So, so this first part, what I'm exploring your mind with is that how to come out of this box of fixed and locked-in indicators in every broker. Like, all the indicators are locked. How do I create new indicators? So the first part of my sharing is really there are tools out there and platforms out there where you can actually explore to develop new indicators for FCPO and FKLI. So MT4 is just one of them. You can also develop your systems in Quantopian. You can develop your system in TradeStation, NinjaTrader. There are many other uh, platforms that you can develop your systems in. So, so just be open-minded and uh, have the fun of seeking out uh, platforms that you can create new indicators. And then the whole fun is the process of seeking the truth, yeah? seeking the, the answers. That is the part of the fun. It's not just getting the answer I spoon feed you, right? Okay, so that's the first part. Okay, the, the second part, okay, the second part is once you have the system, let's say, for example, okay, for example, you manage to get some data to your MT4 and you manage to create a customized indicator and then your own system in MT4 for trading FCPO and FKLI, okay? And then now, you want this to be able to run in your broker, okay? I'm just gonna put a few examples, all right? Right, uh, one of the broker that allows automation is uh, GF Apex, okay? They are using TT. If you wanna go through them, you need to use TT, trading technology. Another broker is RHB. If you wanna automate, you have to use Q you can use QST, okay, right? And then another broker is LT, LT Futures. If you wanna automate them, you have to use CQG. All right, so these are the API uh, vendors that work with this broker. So I'm not broker specific, I'm just mentioning a few examples. Uh, all other brokers have their own uh, API vendors you can check with your respective brokers, okay? Whether do they support automated trading, okay? So what I wanna share here is actually the next step, okay? The next step is, uh, I, I just have one slide here just to tell you that if you're interested in um, High frequency trading, okay, and nano second trading execution in uh, Busa. Uh, Busa doesn't support, I think, if I'm not wrong, but my my knowledge could be a few years outdated. Nano second trade yet? They can support up to roughly, I think, around uh, two thousand trades per second, okay, for for stocks. But that data is outdated, so please check with Busa for more updated data. But I'm not talking about. HFT, but just one slide here to tell you that if you want to do nanosecond execution, you need spe specific chips in your CPU, okay, for, for HFT. But uh, today I'm not talking about HFT, I'm just talking about generally uh, automated trading, like maybe a few tricks a day or up to 10 tricks a day or not, not, more, not like a few thousand tricks a day. So that's what I'm, I'm focusing on today, okay, but rather the idea of automation. So uh, for TT, this is the UAT certification process for TT means that if you want, if you already created your own customized indicator and your customized system already, and you want to automate FCP or FKI trading in the local brokers, you have to go through a certification process, okay, that they have to certify that your system is like maybe bugs free, uh, virus free, there's no harm to them, to the broker, it's not going to threaten the broker's back end. So all these things are part of the UAT certification process, UAT, okay, user acceptance testing. 
okay, certification process. This is for TT. This sheet is for TT. Uh, for Q QST and all this, yeah, the sheet is different, but roughly you need to go through this process, okay? So once they, spec the, they, they certify you that you can, then you are allowed to connect, okay, to their API vendor and you are allowed to automate your trading in your respective broker. So that step you have to go through, okay? So I'm going to uh, uh, share... Of course, we are talking about just futures, FCP or FKY, but just um, I'm sure a lot of you will be asking me, how about Malaysian stocks? So this is the answer to you. Uh, there's an example. If you want to automate the Malaysian stock trading in Busan, Malaysia, you can use one of the vendor called end-to-end. -end. Of course, I'm not promoting any vendor or any broker here. Uh, you Different brokers have this uh, ability to support your automated trading. Check with your respective brokers. This is just an example, okay? Right, that you can actually automate stock trading as well. But today we are not talking about stocks, but I'm sure a lot of you will be asking me, then how do you automate stock? So that's the answer. Okay, right. That's this is the more interesting part. Okay, this is the more interesting part, more, more, more innovative part. Um how do I have an intelligent indicator other than just technical ones like MACD, moving average, and stuff like that? Okay, how do I get uh quantitative indicators, like indicators that are more more accurate, more specific, something that is post 1990s theory, that's no longer those technical stuff, but more quantitative stuff. How do I do that? Okay, the key, the key, okay, the key is you have to connect your MT4, okay, if you're using MT4 for automation trading, you have to have one more step. So now it's not just connecting your MT4 to the broker, you at the back end, you have to connect your MT4 to an intelligent or smart data processor, okay? Either it's R or it's Python, okay? R or Python, that's where you can get uh, intelligent libraries where you can have a, a bunch of quantitative strategies. You can find that you don't have to develop everything from scratch, okay? So last time, that's for example, uh, in the early days, okay, I used to develop my uh, quantitative indicators in R, okay? Now everything is in Python, okay? Now, now less and less people use R, but R is still very much popular. Okay, and there's a tons and tons of libraries out there that you can utilize and you don't have to build it yourself in Python as well as in R. Okay, that you can actually, what these things do is that they give you very intelligent uh, indicators or so-called uh, prediction packages like help you to predict where FCPO is going to go next, where uh, FKI is going to do that. They have a bunch of tools that can help you in that. Okay, and if you want to do machine learning, you have to connect your MT4 to Python. Where Python uh, has a set of machine learning tools, okay, which is the closest so far to AI of what I've already mentioned. Machine learning tools can help you, or the models can help you to predict, uh, let's say this week, what will be the FCPO price or FKI price and where will be the direction? Is it going up, is it going down? So if you want your system to be intelligent, okay, you cannot limit yourself to just MT4, not just MT4, but uh, Ninja Trader or or Trade Station, those are very limited. You have to connect your uh, in indicator making interface to a data library, which is in Python or in R. Or that's what I'm trying to say. If you don't get it, uh, I, I I can re-explain again next uh, later. Okay, but that is actually the whole idea: is that if you want your system to be intelligent, it has to be connected to a set of uh data processing infrastructure. And then when they make the prediction, they can send it back to MT4 and then go to your broker for execution. But the intelligence is at the site of Python infrastructure, it's not at MT4, okay? That is the important part that you need to understand, okay? So we have evolved from telling you what our local broker has, their tools are limited. So to break out of this limitation, you can go to MT4, or some other platforms that you develop your tools in a very cost-effective way, some are free. Once you develop those tools and it's not intelligent enough, you have to connect to the data processor backend where you can get very intelligent predictive tools, uh, the libraries online in Python or in R. So that is so far what we ha I have shared so far, yeah? So you can see step-by-step, uh, trading FCPO and FKI become more and more interesting, okay? They become more and more interesting, right? Let's continue on, okay? Now let's talk about just connectivity. This part is very, very, uh, okay, uh, very fixed, very S SOP. So I'm just going to share with you, this is an example. If you want to connect to RHB for your FCPO or FKI trading, you can use 
uh, quick screen trading, which is QST as your API vendor. All right, so for detail, please connect your, uh, every broker has their own API vendor. So I'm not just talking about RHP, I'm just giving you an example, okay? So it can be applied to uh, any other brokers as well, okay? So this, I, I'm just giving you a very, very detailed example. If you want to connect to your, uh, your system, to the broker through this API vendor, that's one way you can do it, it's true. Um, through this uh, QST. So how do I do it? How do I do it? Okay. So first of all, I, I have Spider inside my computer. What is Spider? Spider is my, is the place where it's my Python. Spider is basically Python infrastructure. So I, I use Spider to program my machine learning algorithm. Okay. In Spider. Okay. Spider. I open up my Spider tree. Okay. And then there I, I open it up. Okay. And then I choose there's a certain files that were given by this, this vendor that that's how I can connect my uh, machine learning algorithm to the, uh, to the broker, okay? So some of it is, is given by them, okay? Some of the files are given by them. So I proceed to open up WinRHB, which is also provided by the vendor, okay? I wait for it to launch, all right? And uh, there's, there's a lot of steps here, okay? There's a lot of steps here. I'm not sure whether you can get these slides, but you have to ask the organizer. I'm not sure, okay? But I'll just share with you here. Uh, some of it are a little bit too uh, uh, detailed, okay? Right, uh, account information, and then you'll see your account. You click the, the trading there, and then you'll be able to see the products that you're able to automate, okay? And then from there, you go to web API JS demo. So that's where you can connect. Uh, for RHB, uh, using QSD is using JavaScript to connect, okay? For MT4 to, to RHB, is using JavaScript to connect. Okay, so I have to connect. But my side is not using JavaScript. My uh, spider side, I'm using Python. So I need to convert Python codes to be able to communicate with JavaScript. In between, there is a bridge that I need to build. I'll talk about the bridge later. Okay, so I need to be able to connect to here. Okay, so like all the entry pop out configuration, and then I'll be able to click OK, initial connection. So once you can see that the connection status is connected, means my system. Okay, my, my machine learning system, algorithm system is now connected to RHB through the vendor called QST, okay? This is their vendor software for me to connect, okay? That's an example, WinRHB is their software to connect, okay? So host, the click run, and then it says uh, automated successfully, okay? So there, there's, it's a bit detailed, okay? But I just wanna go through this with you, okay? So that's how I, my system now, can connect to RHB as my as my uh, the the vendor or the broker that I want to automate my trading of my FKLI and FCPO. Okay, of course we have we have done that. Uh, we have actually tested it out. We we have done is is actually successful. Okay, so short term trading strategy for FKLI. Okay, right. Uh, I'm just going to start with uh, machine learning. Okay, it's because I'm not going to talk about any other strategy. Right, I'm just going to talk about machine learning. Right. So machine learning includes data acquisition, cleaning, training the model, evaluate model, and, and repeat, repeat until the model is effective, okay? So I want to talk about the data. The machine is getting what type of data, okay? So the machine is getting data from Bloomberg, okay, under using MRN, machine readable news, okay? means the machine can, the AI can actually read news and fetch news at a very fast speed, okay? It can fetch, uh, this economic uh, in, uh, data release like CPI, PPI, uh, non-farm payroll, all this. And it also can fetch prices of other interrelated markets, like for example, bonds, currencies, uh, gold, and anything that's related to what you want to trade. Okay, like for example, FKLI, if it's an index, then you will need to look at uh, US indices like S&P, all those, they might be have an impact on the Malaysian FKLI index. And of course, the Nikkei, the Hang Seng, as well as the other Asian index may also have an impact. So these are the input into your AI uh, system that you need. These are the data. So data is, if you want to trade FKLI, remember the data is not FKLI price alone. You need to include other data like news and stuff like that. That's what makes a system intelligent is the data. It's not just the algorithm or the method of processing, but the data, the raw data is important. That is the difference between a very, very good AI system and a so-so AI system, okay? So you can see that if my system can read MRN, machine readable news, is able to read at a very fast pace, okay, of about uh, 0 0.2 seconds, it can process about 50 new sites, okay, and 20,000 tweets, okay? So the system can process news very fast, okay? And if you were to ask me, um, does 
uh, is it available? Is it not just US data, but how about Malaysian stocks, Malaysian futures? Do any service company provide this service of MRN for Malaysian data? The answer is yes. There are some data, there are some companies in Bangsa South that provides the MRN for Malaysian stocks and all this. Okay. So please go and search it out. I'm not going to promote any company. Yeah. Okay. And the way the the AI is going to read the data is that it actually reads the data line by line. I mean the, the news in the form of MRN line by line. So if let's say one of the news is the Deutsche Bank Tat City Group. Uh, by 40 cent to 0 0.75 is considered a downgrade by the AI. So you will actually rate, rate this news really negatively. And then what you'll do is that you will have an aggregate rating of every single product that you're trading or you want to watch, and it will make it into a chart or indicator for you. Okay, for example, like this. Okay, so below here is the news sentiment, okay, of that product. So if let's say this is NASDAQ, and you can see that there's a lot of news that the data fetch, the AI fetch, and then it, it, it just absorbs and then it process it, okay, overall now, the news is getting from positive to negative. So below here, you can see it goes from green color to red color. So you can see NASDAQ is going down as well, okay? And then here, the middle part is the volatility of the tweets, okay, the tweets volatility, okay? So if it gets from less negative, more ne negative to less negative, as you can see, the red color is reducing, you can see NASDAQ going up, okay? And this one is the news goes from negative to positive, yeah? You can see the goal, this on goal, is starting to go up as well, okay? And uh, this one as well, from negative to positive. And then there's a lot of volatility in people tweet, tweeting about uh, gold. There's some good news about gold. And then gold's going up. And from the moment gold is positive to the moment that goals go up, there is a period of about six hours, okay? So it's not that this is too fast for you, no. You actually have a lot of time to prepare for this trade, okay? If you want to manually trade this trade, it's possible. Okay, so MRN indicators are not just for the machine. Human can use the indicator for manual trading as well. Okay, right. So just an example. So this one as well, okay, from sentiment turning positive for this product until the product actually go up the price, there's a there's a lag time that you can actually prepare the trade for. So MRN uh, is, is part of the raw input into uh, machine learning algorithm, and you can utilize it well. If you know how to utilize it well, it is an advantage to you. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to go into it, okay? But that is one input, interesting input that give you alpha of your algorithm of your system is MRN, machine readable links, okay? The second thing is about the way you process. This is talking about the infrastructure of your AI or infrastructure of a machine learning algorithm. There are so many models out there and uh, RNN, okay, CNN, uh, uh, ANN, okay, uh, also... Uh, there are a few others like SVM, support vector machine, okay, then uh, uh, K nearest neighbor, but I choose LSTM because of a certain advantage. I won't go into detail, but that is the machine learning model that I'm using. And that is the same model that AlphaGo is using, right, to, to beat the best uh, Go master in, in, uh, in Korea called Lisedo. If you know about AlphaGo being able to best beat the best Naidan uh, Go master, chess master in, in, in Korea, is using the same power infrastructure called LSTM, okay? Machine, uh, sh uh, long short-term memory infrastructure, okay? Uh, again, I'm not going to go into detail. It's a bit of rocket science here. Most of you are not rocket scientists. So uh, just to let me know that, that the machine can see parents, okay? LSTM algorithm can see patterns that human eyes cannot see. So if there's a certain of patterns in FCPO and FKLI, they are hidden to human eyes, but the pattern is there, the machine can pick it up, okay? The machine can pick it up, okay? Right, for example, pattern that seems very, very blurred to us, but to the machine, these are very clear cut patterns, but we can't really see, but the machine can tell us there are some patterns there in FCPO, okay? So uh, the details of how to optimize this this system, like the optimizer activation epochs, uh, I won't go into the detail, okay? But please, if you are really interested, go ahead and Google research into. And Google has a very, very good uh, learning free website for all the people who are interested in LSTM model. The website is called uh, TensorFlow Blackground, uh, Playground, TensorFlow Playground, okay? TensorFlowPlayground.com. So you can just search. Okay, Google TensorFlow Playground, you'll be able to find this where they teach you step-by-step step how machine learning works, okay, how AI works, okay. So I'm just going to give you an example, okay, example of how I train the system to predict FCPO, okay, right. So this is a LSTM machine learning model, 
and the input okay is is MRN. The input is uh some other things like things which are related to what I want to use. Okay, right. Then the output okay the the model is this train and retrain. Okay, and then that uh, how how do I evaluate whether the system is good or not? Okay, I use three things. I use uh this uh, mean absolute error. I use mean square error and also there's RMSE okay and also R square. These are the type of things that I use to evaluate whether my model is good or no good. So it's very different from if you have a portfolio and it use a sharp ratio, a comma ratio to evaluate, it's very different. Machine learning model, you use a very different type of matrix to evaluate whether this system is good or no good, okay? RMSE, R square, and MAE. These are the main three uh, matrix that I use to evaluate whether my machine learning system is good or no good. Okay, right. So I give you an example. Okay, just an example. Uh, for example, I have data until here, until uh, 20, 218, uh, 31st May. Okay, so the, the last data I have is 2424. That's the FCPO price. Okay, so I put it into the system. The, the machine learning algorithm uh, fetch all the data and then it process. Okay, and then it pop out the, the, the output is that 2444 is the prediction. Okay, means that the LSTF model predicts that there's going to be a small increase in price from 2424 to 2444 in the coming few days. Okay, that's what it predicts. That's what it predicts. Okay, so is it going to be true? Is it is it reliable enough? Okay, let's just just let's just have a look. Okay, you can see that uh, 2444. Two days later, when the price opened, the price was 2444. Okay, so that's exactly as how the LSTM predicted. The exact price is two days later. Okay, two days later. So so is this a one-off luck or is it is it uh is it science okay so what this system does is that it gives all sorts of prediction for every week and then from there it find the most possible path that price can travel based on all the information the raw data they give it the system process it and came up with a pr price path prediction okay so it's something like that every week it's going to draw a, a blue line telling you that okay it's going to come down or it's going to go up so that's what LSTM system can do, give you a price path, okay? And where is it going up or is it going down? Okay, all right. Uh, later on, probably if I have time, I'll just show you how LSTM system works. I'll just show you my, my spider and I run a, a demo in spider and show you that it works that way, okay? So that is actually uh, using LSTM system, a form of machine learning system to predict FCPO and really can run live fully automated in one of my broker, which is RSB, through their vendor called QST. So I think I've slowly lead you from the fixed broker, okay, a login indicator, all the way to here that you, as you can see, a uh, trading FCP or FKI can become more and more interesting for you. It become very, your, your mind may be open up that, to new possibilities, okay, right. Now let's go to um, things which can, impact on FKLI, okay, FKLI, because these are the things which are like um, related to macro, like uh, GDP, EPS, uh, then 10 year U, S&P, okay, these are macro dimension factors, okay, then this part is really where the alpha is. If your system is able to process and quantify macro, that is where your your system can really outperform others, okay? So that is one part that I'm not gonna go into deep because that is our proprietary technology, is our macro engine. For the, as all of you know that uh, you introduced myself as a robot, uh, one of the robots fund manager. So uh, our robot is very much macro engine based and that is our winning factor that no one else has that. And that is very much processing uh, fundamental data, but everything is, Algo and also uh, automated and also uh, uh, quantified. That is all. So I'm not going to spend too much time into it. That's our proprietary, but I just show you that we have a macro engine that is our alpha. And also we have a way to manage the risk of FKLI automation. Okay, there are, there are different ways we manage risk. The system automatically method risk. We just have to watch the show. The robot does everything. It's actually pretty interesting. So if you see the robot wins and wins and wins, it's very encouraging. If you see the robot lose and lose, it's, it's very, very worrying. So, so that our emotion fluctuates with the robot as well. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna show with you, zoom in. Okay, there you go. So the LSTM every day, it will tell me roughly what's the probability of going down, going sideways and going up. Okay, so for example, going down is red color. So there are 22% of going down today, 27.98% of going sideways and there are 50% of going up. So most likely today is going to go up. 
Okay, so that's what the LSTM system is telling me. But of course, it's just telling me visually. I don't have to do anything. It's just informing me, but it's going to do everything for me. Okay, I'm not going to do anything. So what it does is that you were just going to uh, place an order because why it's predicting that it's going up. Okay, it's going to place an order of uh, these uh, indices. So here the example is NASDAQ, but I also from the NASDAQ, okay, the example is NASDAQ is based on NASDAQ leading L uh, K FKLI. Okay, this strategy that I have, uh, this is called intermarket strategy, then it's going to place a trade in FKLI for me through the broker system. Everything is automated, yeah, automated. And then uh, what should be my exit strategy? How far can this trade go is the quantitative modeling of the volatility of FKLI. And this one, I will just share some of the secret I have with you, uh, is using Gutsch model. Gutsch model is how my system exit. Okay, based on the projected volatility of FKLI. So this is the, and I'm using e -gutch, okay, of all sorts of gutch. okay. And then make it into visual, this is what you see, okay. The, the support and resistance are quite clear here for FCPO, FKLI, okay. You can see here that this way it shorts, this way long. The system has long and short points, okay, which is uh, accurate to a certain extent. This is for FCPO, okay, it's on H1 chart. Okay, this one chart. This is strategy, and I show you the result. The result is a uh, um, uh, trading FKLI using this way. The starting capital is um, uh, 20, 20,000. Okay, the ending capital is 24,000. You can see here, right? Again, uh, past records are no guarantee of future performance. The key is not to show off or to show you uh, that, that the system is really good and I'm not selling you anything, but the key is telling you that. This is possible, right? Automation of machine learning algorithm is actually possible for FKLI trading and FCPO trading. So, so please do open up your mind and explore in this area and make your own trading interesting. So it's not really to show off anything, right? It's but to tell you this technology is possible and it's not just like, uh, it's just new, okay? But it's proven and it's matured technology already. So please go ahead and explore, all right? That's, that's actually what I'm trying to say, okay? Right. So next is, uh, but last, okay, last part is how do I, how do you set up this LSTM or this machine learning? I didn't uh, spend much time explaining, right? Okay. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time to explain to anyone can do it. It's not just that, oh, you need a lot of money. You need a lot of capital. Only company can do it. No, any retail trader can do it and it's free. Okay. I'm going to share with you. This software is free. It's called Anaconda. Okay. It's called Anaconda. You just have to download this software. It's free. And once you download this software, it comes with all the rest as well. Last time we had to install one by one, now it's all in one. Okay, so it'll become a lot easier. So you just have to install this software and then everything is given to you as well. TensorFlow is given to you, Keras is given to you, and through the uh, Anaconda prompt, you can pick install whatever library that you need and just install on its own. So, so installing the infrastructure to program machine learning has become a lot easier today as compared to last time. So any retail trader can do it. Why? First of all, it's free. Secondly, it's convenient. Just install one software, everything else is there. And third, there's so much resources in YouTube, in, uh, uh, you know, in online to teach you step-by-step step how to go about programming a machine learning algorithm. There are so much free resources out there and free libraries out there. So today, compared to 10 years ago, it's a lot, a lot easier to, to have an innovative system to trade FCQ at KLI using machine learning, okay? Okay, or a form of AI, okay? So if you are a non-programmer, uh, Jupyter Notebook is, uh, is in English form, it's a lot easier. If you're a programmer, you'll be like me, you'll be using Spider Tree to program your machine learning codes. Okay, right. Then the next, the last secret that I want to share with you is how do you link your MT4 to your broker's platform? Let's say your broker's platform is using JavaScript, okay? Your MT4 is using Python. How do you link over? The secret is 0MQ. That is the bridge to bridge over. From MT4, MQL4, that is the programming, okay, of MT4, bridge over to RHB or to uh, TT or to JF Apex, everything can be bridged over using zero MQ. Okay, that is the key. Okay, so I'm not going to go into detail. That is good enough tips for you. Okay, that's good enough tips for you. So I have another 10 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to share with you. Okay, I'm just going to share with you the actual, uh, the actual life that, okay, that I want to share with you, actual life of how I run my LSTM. Okay, I'm just going to share uh my 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 python 
Okay, all of you can see my Python here. All right, so this is my my uh, uh, spider tree. I think all of you can see. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to run uh, the prediction for. These are some of the old data, okay? Because why? I'm not going to predict anything, okay? I'm not going to tell you. I, I'm not going to recommend any stock. I'm going to not going to recommend you or buy or sell. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you the process, okay? That this is this is the primitive way of doing things. Now everything is automated. When we first started, everything is just primitive, step by step, click and then it run, click and then it run. Okay, these are our old models. Okay, so it's just it's trying to process all the data it has, and then it's going to tell me. Uh, should I, if I want to buy tomorrow, what are my chances? What are my odds? Okay, so it's just going to take some time to actually load. But what you can see here is the result. Okay, you can see here is the result. The prediction shows you that about 0.148 is down, means that there are 14.8% chance that tomorrow this thing is going to go down. There are 58.1% chance it's going to go sideways, and there's 26.9% chance it's going to go up. So what it's telling me is that the chances of going down is very little. It's either going to go sideways or it's going to go up. So if I want to long this product tomorrow, it could be FCPO, it could be FKY, it could be go, it could be anything. Okay, I'm just showing you an example of the process. Then I have a lot more confidence. Okay, it's, it's going on now because my my laptop is very slow, so it's good. It will it will it eats a lot of resources for LSTM model to run in a normal uh, computer. Okay, this is a normal laptop. It's not a very high end laptop. Okay, so yeah, uh, the laptop I'm using. Some of you will be asking me. I'm, I have 16 gig RAM. Okay, this is a five year old laptop. A 16 gig RAM, and this is an i7 laptop. Okay, so that is a very slow speed that is going to run LSTM you need at least 16 gig RAM normally you it's better you have 64 gig RAM to run LSTM that would be really fast and use a server to run use those uh, uh razor blade server you know those things I don't know I'm not a server guy but you need the higher the spec the faster it can run and you can process data okay so hardware is important as much as software if you're really serious but for people who are just starting out wanting to explore this area just don't have to spend any money just go online and learn more and with a laptop you can also do it so you can see from here that uh the prediction is this so it's telling me that if i want to long i have very little chance of uh, losing money okay i have less chance i'm gonna say little chance about only about 14.8 percent chance i'm going to lose because it's going to go down but if it's sideways i will still break even right and then if it goes up I have a, but it's not very good odds as well. So probably I'll just do a, because you say that most likely 58.1% chance is going to go sideways. So most likely the system will switch to a range bound trading model. It's not going to do, go a breakout model. Okay. The system can also switch between models, breakout or mean reversion. Okay. So that is what the system is going to do. So that's an example of uh, LSTM model program in Python using Anaconda infrastructure. Okay. So I think these are some of the tips. Uh, a lot of things that I don't want to specify because again, it's proprietary. I cannot spend, I cannot uh, share too much, but also I want you to have the fun of exploring. Okay. And enjoy. Okay, learning the process. So that's that's an that's an example. Okay. So next thing I'm going to share with you is this MT4. Some of you have never seen MT4 before. Okay. So I'm just going to share MT4 with you. What the hell is MT4? Okay. So uh, this is MT4. There you go. And then uh, you can program using um, there's a there's a thing here called a meta trade meta editor. And you click this, you'll be able to uh, basically load and, and a program that can code your new indicator and this is the indicator that we code okay our uh, arch model gush model these are volatility based uh, quantitative models that can show you a uh, volatility explosion better or more accurate than bollinger bands okay so i, I just compare bollinger band with arch and gush uh, is actually more accurate than Bollinger Band. Okay, so just an example. Okay, some of the quantitative models that we develop ourselves. But what I want to show you is this one. Is the you just click here, and then you'll be able to see this. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether you can see that. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the meta editor, right? Share. Okay, you can see meta editor. So this is where you can start your own indicator. That's where everything becomes fun. Then you are not locked down by a broker. Okay, like that you all can only can use Bollinger Band, only can use Stochastic, only can use MACD, only can use uh, MoveH. No, then, then you can program your indicator here. Then if you think about a lack of data, then you can always import data into MT4. That is possible as well. Okay, all right. So, yeah, so that's what I want to share. Okay, until now, I have uh, four more minutes, okay, to finish until 9.30. 
Okay, these are the software. Okay, that I can I think I can share with you. First is Anaconda, uh, Python, uh, uh, this spider tree. You have seen that. Okay. Second is this um this uh so-called uh meta editor coming from MT4. That's where you can program. You can program this uh, uh algorithm, a new indicator as well as the fully automated system. You can program it here. Okay. And then the last thing. Okay, I still have four minutes. I want to share with you. The last thing is where do I develop those quantitative models, like for example, GDP, uh, non payroll, uh, what things impact what thing, okay? What type of software do I use to develop macro-based uh, strategy, okay? So I'm just gonna share with you that as the last thing that I'm gonna share with you. And then after that, uh, that, that, that will be all, okay? I'm gonna share with you uh, this thing called, uh, oh, it's not open yet. Okay, let me just open it first. It's called eView. Okay, so I do a lot of my quantitative modeling in eView. Okay, so I'm just going to share that with you. All right, uh, eView. Okay, share. Okay, you all can see this is my eView. So I'll just show you some of the things I have. Okay, uh, sorry because I'm quite messy. There's a lot of things here. Okay, raw data. Right, for example, this is my ETF portfolio anyway. I'm just gonna share with you some of the things, okay? So I, I can develop easily my uh, models here, like, like for example, who has impact on who, who is, who is affecting who, and also like for example, Granger causality test, uh, whether the, the indices have impact on my ETF and stuff like that, so SPX uh, on my um, ARKK, ARKG, okay? And then another one maybe, um, a M O M. So does does S and P have impact of my these three ETF? So it's just going to show me, right? Like for example, S and P does have a significant impact on ARKK. You can see the probability is significant. It's less than zero point zero five. Okay. So I can build my quantitative model here. It does have impact on ARKG as well, but it does not impact on A M O M a lot. So this ETF is not impacted. So my macro a uh, model is built in eView, okay? And, and not many people use eView, okay? But that I use eView to build. So again, again, another tips for you, okay? So I think uh, that's, that's, that's really about it that I show with you here and there, what are the tools I use, okay? What are the tools I use, okay? And then just now I was sharing with you uh, how to build a gush model. It's very simple. You can just build a gush model here. Like for example, I want to build a gush model for uh, uh, SPX. Okay, SPX. Okay, C, and then I'll just switch to Arch model. Okay, this is a Gatch 1 1 model for SPX. Okay, I'll just uh, click OK. Right, there you go. That's my Gatch model, and that is the formula. And I just paste this formula. Where do I paste it in? I paste the formula in MT4. Okay, so I can create a proprietary volatility based model that is better than Bollinger Band, just like that. Do it in eView and then paste this formula inside MT4. And in MT4, that's where this comes from. So if you want to check, uh, is it from, is it MT4? Is, is it come from here? You can see that from the, from the uh, formula here. All right. And you can just check back to MT4. Let me just show you. That's, a, that's the last thing I'm going to show you is the MT4. Okay. Right. The meta trader. Okay, this thing, right? And you can see from here that it's actually come from here, right? The MT4, uh, let me share with you some of the things I have. Uh, this is the Arch model, right? Modified, and you can see that the, right? Okay, Python, Python, editor. Okay, you can see that that formula is exactly the same as the formula here is from the eView. So I paste it here, then it become my, my proprietary indicator the volatility based indicator, which is better than Bull in Japan. So that's that's how I do it. Okay. Right. So it's exactly 9:30 now. Okay. I'm gonna stop. Okay. I'm gonna pass it back to the host. So that's my sharing for today. All right. Now it's the QA Q &A session. So thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you learned something. I hope it opened up your mind. So please again, I hope you will research and explore and enjoy the whole process, okay, of your journey of trading. Okay. So I'll pass the mic back to the host. Thank you very much. That's my sharing for tonight. All right. Thank you, Alex, for your uh, wonderful uh, sharing. So I, I believe uh, for most of the uh, audience here, they might uh, be um, 
you know, uh, thinking that, you know, this session might be really, really uh, totally mind blowing because, you know, uh, for this session, we, this is actually considered as a very uh, advanced topic. So, which is why uh, for our LLF uh, uh, webinar, we have a uh, beginners as well as an uh, intermediate uh, topic as well. So if you don't understand this as advanced topic is all right as well. Uh, however, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can type your questions in the Q&A box and make sure that you actually uh, send it to all co-hosts so that I am able uh, to uh, capture your question or grab your question from the Q&A box and then uh, we will be uh, answering uh, by Alex. All right, so and later on, I will be uh, summarize this a little bit for uh, some of our audience because, uh, you know, this is really, really an advanced topic where, uh, in fact, uh, you know, for most of us retailers, we think that, you know, uh, trading is just only fundamental analysis or just only a technical analysis. So this is actually uh, would be considered as a combination of a quantitative analysis uh, whereby we are still using fundamental analysis in our trading. It's just that, uh, you know, uh, through uh, artificial intelligence, through uh, computer technologies, uh, we are able to actually, uh, you know, uh, using computers to process all those uh, fundamental as well as technical data so that uh, we use the, the power of computer technologies to help us to make uh, trading decisions. So in short is that the most important thing uh, you know, for uh, most of you, us, what we need to understand is we need to have an original idea of a trading strategy, which, uh, you know, Alex have already shared way, way earlier. So it doesn't really matter if you don't understand uh, programming uh, uh, languages yet, because those are those things like, you know, fundamental analysis or technical analysis. It takes time for us to acquire uh, those skills uh, for us to learn. So, um, so now let's uh, go on and uh, see uh, what other questions that uh, our audience might have so that uh, Alex is able to uh, help you clarify some of the uh, you know, questions that uh, you might not understand. So the first question uh, would be uh, how many uh, contracts that uh, would I need to trade before considering for uh, automation, Alex? Okay, uh, well that, <laughs> As I say, for automation, almost the whole process of development could be free because nowadays a lot of things are free because of general companies like Google, they make uh, machine learning and all this free. So actually, you can start with even demo account, not risking any money. And you can just test it for one contract. Okay. If your question is about uh, how many contracts should I trade before it's commercially worth it for me to venture into uh, machine learning, if that's the type of question that you are asking. For me, is that I would just trade with one contract, I will also have the fun of venturing into machine learning or AI. So to me, minimum one contract is enough, okay? So we are not we are talking about just general type of AI that you can explore yourself. But if you are talking about uh, expensive AI infrastructure like high frequency trading, then of course, Every month you should be trading at least a few thousand contracts before it's worth spending millions into developing this type of HFT, which is not my topic today. I'm not talking about HFT. Okay, so if you're talking about just generate the fund of AI trading, one contract is enough. That would be my answer. So uh, what I'm hearing from Alex is that, uh, uh, let me clarify a little bit. Uh, uh, so does that mean that uh, for retail uh, traders which, uh, with uh, small funds, uh, they still can explore the possibility of, you know, testing out uh, uh, automation while, uh, you know, for automation, it would be more suitable for people with uh, bigger funds or people who, uh, you know, tend towards uh, uh, professional tradings. Is that right? Uh, yes, even just a retail, you can just try out automation with, with just one contract with a small fund is still possible because uh, automation doesn't cost a lot now for the local brokers. Some of the brokers are quite uh, relatively cheap in doing automation. Okay, so uh, for those of you who I might not be uh, clear enough is that, you know, uh, in the olden days, automation really takes a lot of, uh, you know, hectic work where, you know, nowadays automation is uh, quite easily available uh, for retails as well. So as long as you, uh, you know, spend some a little bit time as well as uh, learning and acquiring some skills on automation, then you can do it uh, as well uh, to seek what are the possibilities uh, for yourself in uh, during trading. So next questions. 
what are the trading time frames the AI acts uh, on uh, FCPO as well as uh, FKLI? Whether is it uh, intraday or um, beyond more than one session? Okay, uh, I have two answers. One is for those who already have a strategy. Let's say you're already familiar with, let's say, scalping using five-minute charts or tick chart. Uh, stick to your strategy. You don't have to accommodate AI. AI should accommodate you. Okay, basically, you're just automating your strategy and making it more intelligent using AI, but you already have a strategy. This is for those who already have. For those of you who do not have a strategy, okay, I would say you can always start with one hour chart okay for ai to analyze that's the easiest for ai to process and also because uh, one hour is because our computer are slow so if you have a tick chart the computer cannot handle it it's on a practical issue for video trader so a uh, h1 chart is suitable for a beginner uh, exploring a uh, machine learning algorithm to trade fcpo and fki all right uh, for next question uh, can we use excel to uh, program um, our own model Okay, uh, this comes from the old timers. A lot of locals use Excel to automate. Uh, I believe it's still possible. I've seen people doing it. Uh, I myself do not use Excel. Uh, there is a lot of limitations because of the Excel functions. Uh, uh, Excel has auto solvers and macro and all those things. But I think when it comes to AI, I don't think Excel can handle AI mainly because it's very hard to connect Excel to AI libraries on the cloud. Okay, it's not easy. So for me, as far as the, what I know, because I'm not an expert in Excel, is that it's more difficult to do in Excel. Let's see, uh, next question: Can we still uh, execute automation without a data processor? Can we execute? Uh, uh, can we still execute automation without data processor? Uh, definitely, you can definitely automate uh, automation. Data processor, if you're talking about Python and R, is to make your strategy more intelligent. You can definitely have a mechanical system and automate your mechanical system without a data professor, a processor. That's definitely a yes. Yeah. All right, next question. Uh, will the machine learning devi deviate from our initial uh, algorithm? Ah, that is a very good question, actually. Uh, machine learning models is a bit of a black box because if you're using online libraries like Google, TensorFlow, all this, you don't really know how it works. So. How, how, how close is it to actually what you want or what you are already doing using a strategy is a question mark. So it's your own exploration process. Whether this machine learning model can do what you intend it to do. If it ends up that you do not know how to tame this machine learning model, then you have to let it go. That's actually the uh, pros, uh, the, the try and error process that our team went through for years. That is a good question actually, yeah. Right, uh, next question. Uh, Alex, can you briefly explain what is, uh, how does a machine learning model uh, works in, in a layman, uh, layman term? Um, layman term is that you, you treat this uh, as this machine as a child, that you're teaching a five-year-old child how to speak English, okay? So you need to let the child understand, first of all, that, uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, the alphabets, and then the basic words. And then this child, imagine it grows really fast. Like in another three days time, the five-year-old child has become 10 years old. And another one week time, 10 years old child has become 20 years old. And then in 10 years later, you can, 10 days later, not 10 years, sorry, 10 days later, you can teach this child suddenly become 20 years old that uh, some news are fake, some news are real, and there's meaning behind every single words that Jay Powell are saying. So the machine can learn really, really fast. And you just start from like teaching a baby to teaching a child, to teaching a teenager, to teaching a very, very mature adults in the period of just one month. The machine grow that fast, okay? So, so if you want to say in a layman term, the way you train a machine is exactly like how you train a child. I see, all right. And next question, uh, will robo trading distort the market direction? Okay, uh, LFT, low frequency trading, which is what I'm doing, means every day is just a few trades a day. Okay, that's what the machines are doing for me. It will not distort. High frequency trading algorithm will distort the market. Okay, flash crash, it will cause a, 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 a lot of volatility in the market. It does, but that's HFT. So machine learning 
uh, can be divided into uh, algorithm trading into HFT and LFT. So if it's LFT, it will not. If it's HFT, it will. Okay. Uh, Alex, all right. Uh, next question, Alex. Uh, earlier, you mentioned uh, several uh, brokers that uh, may, may provide these automation features. Uh, can you repeat yeah. uh, them uh, another round so that uh, others may know uh, what are the brokers uh, that may uh, have these features for them to uh, test out their automation uh, trading? Okay, okay, all right. Uh, uh, some of the brokers, Somehow, not not exclusive list that is possible to support automation, including RHB, okay, including uh, GFA packs, including uh, LT trading, okay, right. Some of the brokers, all right, no, not uh, and including Afin Hong, okay. So, uh, please, you can check with your respective broker whether they do or not, okay. But I will not be promoting any broker, so uh, please check with your respective broker, okay. Thank you. Right. So you need to, uh, for those of you who are listening, you need to check with your respective brokers whether do they uh, provide a platform for you to uh, run your automation trading. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, how long did it actually take you to develop a profitable uh, AI after starting a developing one? Oh, good, good, good question. The first AI is always the most difficult. So what I just shared just now, the LSTM model, the first version of it from the start to the end uh, with my team, I have a very small team of three people. It took us three years and the total amount span is about 300 over thousand ringgit. That is the cheapest, cheapest that I ever heard of. Uh, yeah, you know, it could take millions and millions to develop AI, but we took less than half a million ringgit. So I think that's already cheap enough. Yeah. It actually takes a lot of, uh, mainly it's just salary, okay? Uh, as I say, a lot of uh, resources are free. So if you're doing yourself, you don't have to pay people things, you have time and patience to do it, you DIY, it will cost you very little money. All right. So uh, there you have it for both of you who are listening. It, it takes a lot of time as well as uh, it costs a little bit money for you, especially if you want to do an uh, AI method of uh, trading. Well, uh, for next question, uh, as earlier, I have heard, uh, you know, some of the models regarding, you know, uh, Arch, Gatch, uh, what are those uh, models uh, actually uh, are? Where do they come from? Okay, good questions. Uh, volatility uh, trading was first made popular by John Bollinger in Bollinger Band, yeah, 1970, when he published John Bollinger on Bollinger Band. Bollinger Band becomes so popular, every one of our broker has it. So Arch and Gatch are just like Bollinger Band, they are volatility based indicator okay others are like arima uh, vecm var those are, are those are the indicators that were developed uh, post 1990 like the first question that i asked myself in the beginning is that what happened to 1990 to now is there no new indicator be being developed the answer is there are but they are not in our broker's platform and you need to search for it uh, so there you have it. So it is, uh, as we can see here from Alex saying that, you know, uh, most of the indicators are actually, uh, some of it uh, comes from the domain of uh, technical analysis and some comes from, you know, uh, from quantitative studies. And I remember earlier on, uh, you know, throughout my days during university uh, in, you know, in our economic class, especially econometric, uh, we do have some exposure about uh, arch gauge as well as uh, arima models so for those of you who uh, do not understand what are those uh, you know uh, jargons uh, don't worry because all of these things are still considered as uh, one or part of the fundamental uh, analysis uh, in your trading so uh, that is actually one of the very very uh, specialized uh, uh, segment in fundamental analysis or you may call it uh, quantitative analysis so if you do not understand about you know ai or all of these uh, you know, very, very mind blowing technical stuff is okay as well, because uh, today we are actually just only exploring as well as so that you open up your mind. Uh, what are the new possibilities uh, regarding uh, automation as well as uh, AI trading? So uh, next question would be, uh, uh, Alex, can you share with us uh, a simple guideline for uh, those uh, of our audience uh, if they would want to uh, interested in learning how to uh, build their uh, own simple AI? Can you share with us a, a guideline or a step by step process? Uh, how do we uh, uh, learn or acquire uh, these skills so that, uh, you know, uh, some of our audience might be interested in it so that it actually helps them to uh, speed up their learning curve in, uh, you know, venturing into this domain in order to help them uh, in trading. Okay. 
Uh, first of all, uh, I have to be very sensitive that I'm not going to promote any academy, but I'm just going to share with you that there are some academies in Malaysia and Singapore that's the nearest to our hometown that teaches AI uh, algorithm trading. There are. So you can go and seek online and Google uh, algorithm trading academy. That's one way if you can learn from a Sifu and learn from the gurus out there. Another way, of course, the DIY method is that you can go to Google uh, TensorFlow Playground, the, 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 the name that I mentioned, and there they will teach you step by step what AI is, how AI works, and from there you can learn a lot without paying a single cent. So that's another way of uh, learning about AI. Okay, so there you have it, the simple ways of, you know, learning AI, you can Google it or even uh, finding YouTube uh, out, out from it. Uh, how are you going to develop a simple model uh, to, for your AI? And uh, next question uh, would be, uh, how can we uh, automate directly in the uh, QST? Ah, oh, okay. Uh, as far as I know, there are two brokers that support QST. One is RHB and one is Afin Huang. So please check with your broker. I think their IT department will support you. Okay, so you uh, again, uh, for those who are interested in uh, whether your broker can uh, support you in that, you need to uh, check with whether your broker can uh, do it or not. Uh, now, uh, next question. Uh, how many uh, models are there in actually uh, uh, doing an AI trading? Oh, okay, right. Um, more than I know, but some are really interesting. There was one model that went into the International Journal. Uh, it's by some uh, UUM three lady professors, and their model is what we call uh, artificial uh, nat nature inspired al algorithm. That is a new form of AI that's very hot now. Is that they observe? Okay, uh, hear this correctly. Yeah, uh, they observe B. Uh, B behavior to predict gold price. Okay, you hear it right. They, they observe what happens to the nature, like how fish swim, how B behave, how the nature behave, like elephant migration pattern to predict gold or silver, or even look at the uh, so-called the, the astronomy to predict a commodity price. That is actually made into an AI. So AI is so vast, there are so many things I don't know. So I can't answer you how many models are out there, but I can only tell you it's more than what I know. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, wow, it's so surprising to know that, you know, we can even use B there to predict uh, the price movement as well. Uh, all right, uh, for next question would be, uh, uh, what are the uh, main programming language uh, that is uh, used uh, to do uh, our AI? Okay, I think I have shared before the main AI is programmed in Python. That's one language that I use. And then, of course, I, I link it to uh, MT4, which is C++. And then the broker, uh, their API is using JavaScript. So it really depends on uh, what type of uh, uh, language that you want to start from, but Python will be a good start. I think generally a lot of people use Python as a start because it's easy and because it's very much AI uh, supportive uh, language. Yeah. All right. And uh, next question, uh, Alex, can you share how to link uh, or connect to a QS, uh, QST API and whether is it possible to get a live take data during trading hour if uh, connected to uh, QST? So same same answer for the just now the question is that please ask your broker on QST uh, who support QST and your broker will answer you that. Because if I go on, then I'll be uh, promoting or marketing for the broker, so which I do not want to. Yeah. All right. <laughs> And uh, uh, another question uh, would be, uh, what are the, uh, other than AI, uh, uh, can you uh, briefly explain uh, what are, are or what AI actually is? Because it, it sounds like a very uh, big or uh, vague term. And can you uh, briefly explain uh, what AI actually is so that uh, our audience uh, could really grasp uh, what does AI actually do? Okay, I, I will encourage you to watch the YouTube on AlphaGo because it teaches you really the concept of AI. AI is, is that, like for example, you, you teach a, a person who is intelligent, like a, a child, right? You teach it A, B, C, D, E, then the child somehow can learn enough, it can form its own structure, it can express things in its own way, creative way, means that you did not teach the child 
to do it in this way, but the child can came up with this idea on his own. Okay, that's the difference between a mechanical system and an AI. Mechanical system is whatever you teach it, it just repeat what you teach it. But AI is that it can come up with the strategy that you have never thought it before. It means it's a form of intelligence. You are actually training something with intelligence. Okay, then AI can actually create its own programming language or its own communication language that it can communicate with other AI that human cannot understand, right? So AI is like what you see in Terminator. It can have its own form of intelligence. So that's what AI is. It's another, so when in AlphaGo, when this Lissador this play with AlphaGo, it's actually our human AI playing with human intelligence, playing with another form of being, another intelligence. That's what AI is. It's another form of intelligence. Yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, uh, another uh, next question, which may be the last question. Uh, can you like, briefly explain what uh, API is and what does it actually uh, stands for? Uh, application processing interface. Uh, API is almost like like a bridge. Like if you want to uh send the data communication protocol, like you want to communicate my computer with the broker's computer, my system be able to be understood the signal by the broker that you need to send through an API. Right, so API is like a bridge or a combination protocol. Yeah, for, for more detail, please do Wikipedia. I think they will explain very well what API is. All right, okay. Uh, uh, another one, uh, how long does it actually take uh, to learn a specific uh, programming uh, language so that uh, we are able to actually uh, do, uh, you know, a form or develop a simple um, a trading strategy? Okay, uh, it depends on the platform. Let's say the, the easiest so far I know is TradeStation is one of the US broker. Their language is so easy, it's English based. Uh, I'm a, from a non-programming background actually. So I actually took about two weeks to learn that language. And from there, I learned C++ uh, so that I can do MT4. That would take me about one year to learn. So it depends on the, the easiness of the language. Some languages are easier to learn, some languages are more difficult. So the, the fastest it takes is about about I think two weeks to a month to learn an easy language like Visual Basic. Yeah, that's all yeah. I can say. So, uh, so it means it doesn't take quite a long time for for a person to uh, really learn a programming language. Yeah. All right. Uh, one more question, which is the last one. Uh, when it comes to uh, you know, uh, automation trading, uh, whether is it a uh, trading strategy important or uh, whether is it uh, AI is uh, more important in these terms? Oh, good question. Right. Uh, I, I was I will rephrase your question. Is automation more important or is a strategy more important? Because AI is part of the strategy. You want an intelligent strategy, that's why you do AI. AI is part of your intelligent strategy. Definitely the strategy is more important than the than, than the automation. Unless you are doing HFT. If your HFT is all about speed, it's not it's nothing to do with a strategy. You just want to be faster than others, you just want to front run others and it might not even be legal, then you are competing on speed. But if you are doing LFT just a few tricks a day, then you're competing on intelligence, you're competing on strategy. So strategy is more important than automation, definitely. Okay, thank you, Alex, uh, for uh, clarifying uh, some of the questions that our audience uh, have uh, regarding the automation uh, or AI for our FCPO as well as uh, FKLI trading. Now, uh, I believe uh, we have already answered many of your questions and uh, it's about the end of the, our um, webinar session. So before we end this session, I would like you to take a few minutes of your time to fill up uh, this uh, feedback form. So you can scan this uh, QR code or uh, type in this link or maybe you can find the link in the chat box uh, below. And it actually takes less than one minute for you to finish. So let us know your thoughts, your comments as well as your feedbacks so that in the near future, we are able to improve further on our site and uh, give you and uh, provide you a greater value contents as well as learning to help you uh, improve your trading as well as uh, broaden uh, your uh, perspective of uh, what uh, are the possibilities in the trading world. All right, so uh, uh, give, um, give us a favor. Uh, do this feedback form and then uh, it takes less than only one minute. And uh, when you have finished, uh, I will call you back in a quick moment later.
about another 30 seconds to go. Okay, time's up. Uh, if you have already uh, submitted your feedback, thanks a lot. While for those of you who haven't finished yet, you can continue to finish it. And uh, thanks for your participation in uh, giving us uh, your valuable feedback and we'll strive our best in improving in the next upcoming session. Uh, now, as I've mentioned to you uh, previously, this uh, is the LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series. It is a series of topics where we will be conducting every Tuesday evening. So it is the same time from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. And there are lots of uh, content pack as well as informative topics uh, where you will be learning some practical knowledge or, or something new like today about futures trading uh, from our experienced speakers. And if you would like to join any session, you can scan this uh, QR code and register the topics that you would like to attend. Now, once you have already clicked the link, uh, you will come to this page and this is actually an event page. So if you like to join the upcoming sessions, you can find the topics on the Tuesday uh, column here and you can click on it and uh, register yourself. And if you would want to find more topics on the upcoming months, you can go to the upper right of the calendar, uh, which is uh, here you can see the July, uh, and click on to the next month and you will be able to find what are the upcoming topics for the upcoming months, right? And lastly, as I've mentioned uh, earlier to you uh, earlier about the LLF online workshop, and this online workshop is uh, different from the LLF uh, webinar. This LLF uh, online workshop, it is actually a step-by-step -step, uh, process where this workshop, uh, we will be guiding you how to kickstart uh, your trading uh, of your uh, first futures contract. So it is a very, very uh, detailed instructional class where we will be uh, sharing the A to Z uh, for you beginners uh, to learn uh, regarding on the futures trading. So it is actually only for those uh, who are serious in starting your futures trading. So if you're serious in uh, you know wanting to start your futures trading, uh, this is definitely uh, right for you. And each and every session, we are limited to, to actually the first uh, 50 online attendees. So only register if you're serious in learning futures trading and uh, don't take up other people's uh, place or spot when you're unable to attend. So, uh, you know, like previous sessions, some of them, uh, they really wanted to learn, uh, but they are unable uh, to register because it's a already full house. So make sure you are seriously uh, wanting to learn how to trade futures, then only you register because uh, trading futures is a little bit different from trading stocks. Uh, you need to understand the mechanism as well as the structure of the futures market uh, before uh, you begin uh, your futures trading. So this LLF workshop is definitely right for you if you're serious in futures trading. Uh, there you go again, uh, you can find out uh, where is the uh, upcoming LLF workshop in our events calendar. And uh, the LLF workshop is actually only on Saturday and Sunday. And the time is either on 9.30 to 12.30 p.m. or 2 to 5 p.m. So if you're interested in it, you can uh, click on the uh, event calendar and register yourself. And uh, before we end this session, uh, let me introduce you to this uh, Brusa Academy. This Brusa Academy is a comprehensive one-stop e-learning platform where you can get all the information and knowledge about stocks, futures, and any other products that you can trade in Brusa Malaysia. So you can scan the QR code on your right here, or you can also Google search Brusa Academy and make sure you are able to find uh, this uh, specific link on your lower left and you can access to Busa Academy for more uh, information as well as more learnings to improve your trading as well as your investing. So, all right, that's it. Uh, this comes to the end of our session today.
thanks to our speaker Alex and I thank all of you of audience for your participation a great learner and I believe you have learned a lot of uh, informative knowledge on how to improve your trade as a trader as well as uh, many many you know uh, uh, new things that expand your horizon about uh, what uh, the possibilities of trading and how you can make trading more fun as well as uh, more uh, interesting so uh, with that uh, i'm cy so i wish you stay strong stay healthy and i'll see you next time good night